Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel where we talk about property investing, business and working together as a couple. It's just me today and if you're new here, my name is Leah, my husband is AK and today I'm gonna to be giving you an overview into some of the top UK cities for investing if you're looking for house price growth over the next 10 years. Purposefully, we're excluding London out of this because London is so pricey now, it is really pushing a lot of investors out. So I thought I'd focus in this video on some of the northern cities in the UK and in the Midlands just because it's a little bit more realistic to get into the deal and also the rental yields are very strong. Let's get into it. In no particular order we have the first city being Manchester. Now out of all the major cities in the region Manchester is considered the unofficial capital of the north and it has that reputation as an attractive place to invest as well in the property space. Manchester has been transformed into a modern and exciting metropolitan area and this has caused a massive boost in popularity as a place to live and invest leading to significant capital appreciation over the last decade. So as you can see here, two bedroom properties are the most popular and they are averaging at 269,856. I took the data from home.co.uk for all of the stats throughout this video. So if you are interested in having a look for yourself or checking out your own investment area, then I will leave a link in the description to their website. What I also like about this website is that as well as breaking down the prices on average for one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedrooms, it also shows you a breakdown of flats terraced houses, semi-detached houses and detached houses with the most amount of data on Manchester in flats. And then if you move over to the rents, the most popular data comes from two bedrooms and the average rent here is £1,569 per calendar month for a two bed in this city. Similarly, underneath, you've got property rents by type, so a room, a flat or a house. I'm particularly interested in the room rents here because we invest in HMO properties, houses of multiple occupancy. So we rent out properties by the room rather than the whole building renting on one AST, which is one tenancy agreement. So the rent for a flat and a room is very, very strong. And moreover, the demand for Manchester is growing and growing. So if we look at this data here and we look at a two bed property, averaging rent of 1,569, and the average price of a two bed property being the 269,856, then we can work out that this is a 6.9% net yield. Now, if you're confused about yield, net yield, gross yield and ROI, then you can check out the video I made all about working out those calculations, which I will link up in the cards above. But now back to Manchester, it's got an impressive innovation district on the horizon called ID Manchester and it's going to occupy a nine hectare site near Piccadilly Station, including 1,350 new homes. Investors in the area will already be knowing about this, uh, about its mixed use and its focus on attracting science, research and development, as well as residential development to the area. And this ID Manchester development is costing 1.7 billion and it's going to be opening in 2027. And these are the sorts of things that people are looking for before deciding on an investment area. I think it's really valuable during your research to be looking at what's coming, what are they building? Are there any new high-speed rail plans for the area to just see what's going on in the area that will encourage economic growth? Definitely when, when you look at Manchester, it just looks like it's going up and up and up. Of course, none of us have got a crystal ball. All we can do is look at the data on these areas and then make our own informed choices from there. So moving on to the next city, we have, drum roll, Birmingham. <laughs> The biggest city in the West Midlands and also just half an hour from where we're based here and where we have a large percentage of our investment portfolio. I might be a little bit biased towards Birmingham. And according to the ONS, the Office of National Statistics, Birmingham is currently the most popular destination for those moving out of London, which I think says quite a lot. It's ahead of other major cities like Bristol and Manchester. And over the last five years, Birmingham's house prices have grown by 29% compared to London's 9%. Let's have a look at the numbers now for Birmingham for average house prices and then for average rent. If we look here, three bedroom properties in Birmingham, average price 273,750. Again, 
I got all these stats from home.co.uk. And then the average rental price for a three bedroom in Birmingham is coming out at 1,780. To work out the yield on that, you would times the average rent, which is 1,780, times that by 12 to find out the annual rent. So that's 21,360. And then what we do is divide that by the cost of a three bedroom property on average, which is coming out here at uh, what we said earlier, 273,750. And then you times that number by 100. Now, obviously this is gross and not net. You've got to factor in your other expenses when you buy a property, like I said. So let's talk about Birmingham. It is amazingly located right in the middle of the country and it's easy access into multiple locations. It's just over an hour to London. And with HS2 on the way, commuters will soon be able to get to London in under one hour, which is pretty impressive. You can get to London in under one hour from other places surrounding Birmingham like Coventry and Nuneaton, but Birmingham to London in under an hour is like a huge selling point. Also, Birmingham's got the second largest economy next to London worth 31.9 billion. And you can actually find affordable properties here that produce strong yields. So when people are looking for investment areas, you, you sometimes hear them say things like, oh, certain areas will be better for rental income. Some areas will be better for capital growth, like anywhere in the South. But with Birmingham and with most places in the Midlands, I think you're getting both. I'm not trying to shout about it too much, but it's got five universities. There's 80,000 students in the area and it's one of the top three most visited cities for shopping in the UK. And also they filmed Peaky Blinders here. So that's really put us on the map. Six seasons of Peaky Blinders and house prices have rocketed since. So I really feel like I'm probably selling Birmingham a bit too much. Maybe I shouldn't be shouting this loud about it, but these are the sorts of things, not necessarily the TV show, but the, the students, the shopping, the economy. These are the sort of things you should be looking at when you're deciding and researching on your investment area, as well as considering the distance it is from you. I know that not everybody can be in their investment area in under an hour, but if you're Midlands based, I'll definitely have a look at Birmingham. Now, next up, we've got Leeds, another northern city. Let's just go straight to the data for Leeds, where the yield on a two bedroom property would be 6.98%. And that's based on an average price of a two bed property and an average rent for a two bed property. If you work it out as a three bed, it comes out at 6.32% in yield. As you can see here, a two bed in Leeds, Average price, 197,775. Three beds, 277. So far, all of the three bedroom property prices that we've looked at in Leeds, Birmingham, and Manchester are all under 300,000 pounds. Whereas as you start to come a bit more south, it starts to turn into 100,000 per bedroom. You can't look at anything three bed that doesn't start with a three when you start to go a little bit more south and then fours, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then if we look at the rents for Leeds, for a three bed, that's averaging at £1,461 per calendar month. We can see here that it is affordable house prices that still have high rental yields, which makes Leeds a very popular choice for investors and has been for quite some time. Also, according to the latest Savills predictions, the Yorkshire and Humber region is set to see house prices soar over 20% by 2028. So this is the joint highest predicted growth rate in the UK alongside the Northwest and the Northeast. So I will link up the Savills survey below if you'd like to have a read of that. Over the last 12 months, uh, property prices in Leeds are 9.3% higher than the year prior and the Leeds property prices trend has continued to the last three years too with prices rising 28.64% since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's Leeds for you. Moving on, let's have a look at Liverpool, which is the next area I want to talk about. The latest Zoopla data reveals that Liverpool is the fastest moving market in England, with a typical seller agreeing on an offer within 17 days of listing their property, which is half of the UK average. So properties in Liverpool are getting snapped up really, really quickly. And areas popular with investors are Waterloo, Sefton Park and Anfield, where the average terrace house yields around 7% and sells for around just over 100 grand, 107,000 pounds, according to Rightmove. So let's have a look at the breakdown of the numbers for Liverpool. 
If we look at it for three beds, because the three beds is the most popular data, again, for this city, the average price of a property with three bedrooms is £226,199. And then the average rent of a three bed is coming in at £1,257 per calendar month. So a little bit less than some of the other areas, but again, the purchase price was a little bit less. Now, if you work out the yield on that, the gross yield, that is coming in at 6.67% for a three bed. Liverpool's also got some really interesting other areas you can have a look at. When I first started out in property, I did a lot of research on Birkenhead and we spent a few days viewing lots of properties in and around the outskirts of the city and everything was cash flowing and it was a deal. And in the end, it was just a little bit too far from where we live in terms of distance. So we decided to not go ahead and invest in that area at the start of our journey. It's not something I'd write off completely now, but that's just my personal experience. But Liverpool is definitely a popular city and how it's recently having another boom again since hosting the European Song Contest a couple of years ago. There's a huge music scene, student scene. It's also really popular for hen and stag do's. So serviced accommodation seems to do really well in Liverpool as well. Guilty, I have been to a hen party in Liverpool and we did stay at a very expensive um, hen party pad that was purpose built for women on hen do's. So definitely one to look at. Also, during my research on Liverpool, I did see that Everton's new stadium is rising up fast on the Bramley Moor Dock, which I haven't yet visited, but I'm sure that we're bringing lots of uh, football fans to the area, as well as new hotels opening up all the time. So I think it is important when looking at an area that we also look at what strategy might work for that area. It's not always going to be buy-to-lets. It's not always going to be social housing or HMO. Sometimes it might be service accommodation, which I think is definitely a big one for Liverpool. Well, that's it for this video. I really hope you have enjoyed this sort of deep dive into some of the research on top UK areas. I know we have focused a lot in this video on the Midlands and the North. So yeah, I hope that you have enjoyed it. Please leave us a comment below if you did. If you have any questions, if you're also interested in uh, mentorship and you can drop us a line below check out our website propertycouple.co.uk where we'll be sharing resources and our top tips for property investing in the coming weeks and months don't forget to subscribe if you're not already that is about all of the parish notices and i'll see you in the next video take care everyone bye